I will go ahead and call this meeting to order. Roxanne, if you'll please take roll, and if everyone will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty. Uh, at this time, we will introduce the new members to council and have a swearing in. Do we want to swear me in first? Yes. Okay. If you'll raise your right hand and repeat after me. <laughs> I, Jonathan Wells. I, Jonathan Wells. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Kansas, and the Constitution of the State of Kansas, and faithfully discharge the duties, and faithfully discharge the duties of Mayor of City of Iola, Kansas, of Mayor of City of Iola, Kansas. So help me God. So help me God. Yay. Welcome. Here on Major. And at this time, I will call up and ask the new council members to um, all approach the front, and we will swear you in all at once. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Nicholas and Carl and Kim, and Steve. I guess that's it, huh? Okay. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I do solemnly, swear do solemnly swear that I will support, that I will support the, Constitution the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Kansas and faithfully discharge the duties of Council Member of City of Iola. So help me God. So help me God. Yay. So now they can... Yep. Um, let me go ahead and say a few words and recognize the outgoing members. Um, let's start with Chase. Thank you for dressing up today. You got it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for everything you've done over the last few years. Chase, I do want to thank you uh, over the last two years. You've attended over 48 city council meetings. Um, you've honorably served not only... The United States, but us again when times come to serve. I really do thank you for your opinion and your willingness to be on the council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Um, Aaron. Oh, okay. Don't forget your nuts. Uh, Aaron, uh, from April 27th. 2015 to January 13th, 2020. Uh, you've attended over 105 city council meetings. You've served honorably for four years. I would like to say a special thanks to you. Uh, you didn't always see it on the camera. Uh, sometimes you and I got fairly heated in some meetings, but the one thing I would like to say is uh, you were always there. Um, I knew that after a meeting that you and I would talk and we'd compromise and you were always willing to listen. And really, um, I do thank you for everything. Yeah. Uh, new council members, if you want to take your seats, we will get started. Come on up. I think you're over here. Carl's here, Nick's here. Okay. Aaron, thank you. All righty. Uh, now that we've got the new council seated, uh, has council had time to review the agenda? I'll make a motion that we approve the agenda as set forth. Second. There's a motion and a second to review the uh, to approve the agenda. All those in favor, please show a voting sign. Opposed? 
Motion passes. Uh, public comments. Persons who wish to address the City Council regarding items on the agenda may do so as that agenda item is called. Persons who wish to address the City Council regarding items not on the agenda and that are under the jurisdiction of the City Council may do so at this time when called upon by the Mayor. Comments on personnel matters, matters pending in the courts, or with other outside tribunals are not permitted. Speakers are limited, limited to three minutes. Uh, any presentation is for information only. No action will be taken. Do we have any anyone wishing to address the council? Okay. Um, consent agenda. Has council had time to re review the consent agenda? Are there questions? I have a question on the appropriations on page five. Under Cox Communications, we're paying about $3,500 a month. Is that monthly? And I know it's like on that first line item, 01510-2006, it's there. And on the very last one, comes at $467 for technology expenses. And then the 511-206, and that third line up, and the one on page six, comes at $518.53. Is that each month? And what does that cover? Technology expense. That usually covers everything from um, our phone to our internet service. Um, I think, I don't think there's much else on there. We, well, there's, no. not with Cox. Yeah. Um, I think at the fire station it maybe covers a cable plan, but we have a cable plan at each of the stations um, since they're 24 hour shifts. With internet? Internet and phone. Any other questions? We make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as set forth. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor, please show a voting sign. Opposed? Motion passes. Um, an executive session is in order. Uh, let me flip to the right pages. Sid, how long would you like this for? Um, let's. What do you think, Corey? 10, 15? Let's try 10 minutes. And um, Mitch the won't be here. He w wasn't able to come today. Okay. Does somebody want to make me this motion? I would move the city council recess into executive session for, would you say, 10 minutes? 10 minutes. 10 minutes, pursuant to trade secrets KSA 75-4319B4. For the purpose, uh, the purpose of this executive session is to discuss confidential data relating to financial and operational affairs and shall include the mayor, city council, city administrator, assistant city administrator, we don't have the gas and water superintendent. Uh, the regular meeting shall reconvene at the city in the city chamber. 618. At 618. Motion second. Uh, there's a motion and a second for an executive session. All those in favor, please show a voting sign. Opposed, we will return at 618. Uh, I will call the meeting back to order. Uh, we're on to new business. Item A, rotary, rotary recycling request. Um, Sid? Mr. Mayor, members of council, um, Rotary, Rotary has been facilitating paper recycling in the area for over 20 years, and um, in recent years, a subcommittee has been working on trying to expand those uh, recycling uh, options in the area, and that's included, um, they through the county, they purchased um, some eight-yard dumpsters that were set out in strategic places to collect um, cardboard from area businesses and then Rotary is requesting recycling, uh, R Rotary Recycling is requesting um, the city assist them in dumping uh, those dumpsters and then transporting the cardboard to the recycling center on North State Street. Um, that request is for dumping the two dumpsters once a week. Um, from the staff standpoint, we want to support recycling. We do have a little bit of a concern with the eight yard dumpsters are pretty big <laughs> and we really only have one uh, one of the, only one of the trucks is equipped to do that dumps d uh, to has a cable hoist that can get to the other end of the um, eight yard dumpster and then raise it up and it's basically vertical and then we have to kind of rate the material out and that's something that if we wanted to do this we might want to think about some alternative some smaller dumpsters that we could use our kind of kick bar with um, and then 
you know, from a staff standpoint, we've always had the residential um, trash service. Does this kind of get us into that commercial realm where we're not really charging for it, but we just, we're, it, I think it's a good thing. It's just we want to make, be conscious of the decision that we're making so that we kind of know where we're headed. What do the smaller ones cost? Um, I believe, Dan, would we say about 300 for a two-yard dumpster? $300 for a two-yard dumpster. And that would make it considerably easier to do this? Yes, I believe correct? so. Okay. What is the older dump, uh, dump truck, I mean garbage truck, sanitation truck used for? Right now, it, Just it's as a standby. It's a kind of backup. I think backup. they use it like once every third week or something like that. Is that correct, Dan? Yeah, yeah. When the other one's down, we're using it regularly. Yeah. And they already purchased their cycling dumpsters. Yes, they already have the eight-yard dumpsters in place. Do you have a cost associated with? doing a weekly pickup? It takes about two man hours for that, and depending on whether or not you want to calculate in um, uh, equipment charge, you're probably looking at 50 bucks or so. I don't know, where do we rent that trash truck for? Do you know, Dan? I think it's $75. $75. So if you seventy-five dollars for an hour's worth of truck and two man hours, you're a hundred bucks. Any other Rotarians want to come and speak on this issue? I see you all in the back. If you want to, if you want to address the mic or address the council, you can. And that was a hundred dollars a week. That would be roughly a hundred dollars a week. My only concern is, I mean, I don't want to. Know, say no or anything. You know, I want to help out, for, especially recycling. Is how, Dan, how much strain is this going to put on that older dump truck? I don't know. They'd say it'd be a strain on, but it'll be a scheduling problem. Is this going to create overtime? Do we? So is it something where if there is time, then yes, we do it. If there's not time, then we say, you know, this week we're swamped. Do you have any kind of backup plan? Yeah. <laughs> put put my week? football helmet on and jump in. Okay. Well, that, out, I mean, and, and seriously, is there is there a backup I'm labor serious. plan? So that would be it. it would just man yeah. manpower. Nancy, we've been we've been unloading these things just by hand for right. the last eight, nine months, something like that. And it's gotten to the point now where the recycling deal is really catching on. And if I, if, can I take just a few minutes to, um, <clears throat> what we found out with the businesses is if we could take the, uh, a frame of an old chemical tote. I don't know if all of you know what that is, but it's a 250 gallon plastic container and it's got a steel frame around it. And we bought, the county actually bought these two eight yard dumpsters to begin with when we started this thing. And we, we got the biggest dumpsters that we could find that we thought could be dumped with a trash truck because we were kind of, you know, actually thinking down the down the road here, believe it or not. And uh, the, the business is just, we gave them a key to the dumpster. We locked the dumpsters because we didn't want uh, trash and dirty diapers and all that kind of stuff in mixed in with the cardboard. Put signs on that says cardboard only, please break down the boxes. And they filled up within three days. Well, then the new wore off of it, basically, is what it amounted to. And we found out that the businesses were no longer willing to, I mean, even take it across the road and put it in the dumpster. So we went with plan B, and that was to put these, uh, these frames out there, and they're really using these things. We just take the tote frames, put it right next to their dumpster, and it's actually easier to put the cardboard in that tote than it is open up the door and throw it in the dumpster. So uh, we found out we've been using these for probably uh, a couple of weeks and it's just amazing. I picked them all up this morning and virtually all of them are full and it was, you know, we, we had a bunch of cardboard out there. So uh, again, to kind of tell you where we are in this thing, we bought a uh, rotary, bought a baler, $12,000 baler that we bought for $250, you know, good choppers, you know. and. Uh, the guy that sold us 
to us. He sold it to us for scrap metal prices. He said, you're going to have trouble with this thing. I really hate to sell it to you. Well, he was right. We had trouble with it, you know. But we got that sucker running good now, and we're just bailing cardboard like you wouldn't believe. And you would not believe how much cardboard you can get in a 1,500-pound bale of cardboard. It's just amazing. You'll look at there and say, oh, that's probably like five bales of cardboard, you know, and you got like three-fourths of one when you get it done. It, it really is something. Now, back to the trash truck. I, I was out there the day they did it, um, not to argue with the hours, man hours. I was trying to figure out if you just have one person come out and do that. And, I mean, it took us, what, 10 minutes to dump that thing. And with a, with a little hoe, you know, if once you get it vertical and you start the cardboard, it should just dump right in the trash truck. Well, I guess I, I thought we had, we had two individuals out there oh, at that, did, at that day. And um, part of that is I think we would probably want to keep two just for a safety factor um, to do that. Um, and I do think it was, I mean, when, you got, when it was time you went to the site, dumped one and then went to the other site, dumped the second one, and then went up to the North State Street, we were probably going to have about an hour tied up into that, yeah. as, assuming everything went smoothly. But I couldn't, I couldn't figure out where you got the two man hours. Right. But. Two people for one hour. That's two man hours. Okay. Uh, well, I have a question with the, with the trucks, and um, I'm going to use a technical term. Does, does the trash juice not damage your cardboard or the recycling? Um, I know we clean them out, but at the same time, there's always going to be, and again, some some sludge left. Yeah, that's a good question, and obviously it needs to be as clean as possible. But the, when they did it that day, it was clean, and uh, I couldn't believe those two dumpsters. There was not much of a pile of cardboard there, so you know you look in there and you think they hold a lot of cardboard, but once they put it in the trash truck and dumped it out, which mechanically everything worked great because they backed in at the uh, loading dock. Um, at Endurance, and the uh, the truck opens from the back. Carl, you know how this whole thing works, but you know, and it just pushed it out. And I think everything cleared. Um, and you know, from a mechanical standpoint, I think it worked great. We're just we're trying to we're trying to make this a voluntary. Uh, no, we're trying to run this thing with volunteers, is what we're doing, and we're trying to get. Uh, rather than us 70 year old guys out there, you know, dumpster diving all the time, we're trying to get the schools involved. And we have. Uh, the schools have consented to put um, recycling barrels in the schools. We're trying to get the FFA group to, uh, to uh, pick up that the recycled material and deliver it where it needs to be. So, you know, we're, we're, it's kind of like drinking milk, you know? If you get people drinking milk at an early enough age, they're going to be lifetime milk drinkers. And it's kind of this, here again, with recycling, we're just, you know, trying to get them used to recycling. And we are recycling everything. It's not just the cardboard. Um, we're, we have a recycling day, uh, the first Saturday of each month, where residents can bring their stuff out there and uh, recycle virtually everything. And we've got a deal worked out with Pro Recycling in Wichita that we put all this stuff, number one plastic, number two plastic, number five, all the stuff in totes. And then the county is then hauling the stuff for us out to Pro Recycling in Wichita. And they keep our totes out there. So all they have to, the, the drivers, you know, we don't have to pay them any overtime or anything like that. They just back up there, unload, and and load up the empty totes from the time before and take off and come back to Iola. And uh, so, you know, it's a real simple situation. And, and so what we've gotten, other than the initial buy-in of the dumpsters, now we have one at Jumpstart, one at Endurance, and one in Moran. And I went over and unloaded that one by hand today, and uh, along with picking up the other cardboard in Moran, but we're also going to try to get the, four, the FFA groups in Moran and Humboldt to work with those recycling uh, pro pickups as well too. So, it's it, we're trying to make it a county-wide uh, volunteer-run um, recycling program because I've seen too many towns, you know, that bought expensive dumpsters and expensive trash trucks, and now that recycled material is not worth anything, they just quit, and you know. Uh, Again, I got started because it was the right thing to do, and I was trying to make a good impression on my kids and my grandkids. And um, 
I found out that my kids, I'm having a little tougher time with them than I am my grandkids, but I'm hoping maybe my grandkids will work on my kids, you know, and get them to buy into this recycling. And again, it's like I tell them, this is not for me. You know, I'm an old guy. It's for you guys. And so... How much, how much difference would it make to you or the rotary if we switch to the two cubic yard dumpster? We need to do it twice a week. So just more frequently? Or, so or, or, have, or, have, two, or have two or have two smaller dumpsters out there. Is that correct? You know, if you had some of the two of the smaller ones versus one of the larger one, but that would make it infinitely easier to pick up. Is that correct? I, I as with a with a two yard dumpster, we could use our kick bar on that. Wouldn't have, wouldn't have to use the cable, and we could use either or truck either truck to do that. What's the well, yeah, but I think if we have that would be a potential thing is you maybe you get two to replace the one and see how you do. And you already have the money invested in the eight yard dumpster. But that's I, I think that's a. That was probably something that should have been discussed, discussed as we before we got started to ask the city to do the dumping because we would have said that dumpster is too big for us to dump. My, uh, my concern is is I know I'm sure you want to take this countywide. Sure. My concern is that we're now going to ha de have a dedicated, not a dedicated truck, but on that day, that's going to be driving to Moran and Humble and. Th this request is just for the two Iola for locations. Okay. You know, one other comment you talked about <clears throat> time and days of the week. Thank you. That's a se separate issue. Yeah, that's yeah, count. I think that's something that could be looked at. We've, we've discussed it a couple of times over the years. Um, council, let's give some feedback to administration here. Um, what are you thinking? I think we need to have some sort of a agreement drawn up between the city and Rotary and have Dan involved in on this, on the ins and outs, so if during the summer, we are busy as all get out with chip and seal or whatever, and we can't dump them for two or three weeks. I don't want Rotary coming back on us or Dan mad as heck because we haven't dumped them. So I think we need to make sure we got an agreement in place that protects both sides. Um, I'm curious if we move to the small. Speaking to you, Mike. There I'm curious, if we move to the smaller dumpsters, I mean, you're going to have a, a change between that equate to man hours wise versus what does that equate to? I mean, if the question is, is the smaller dumpster is going to save more money, but it's going to cost more time versus the larger dumpsters and just having the one truck. And I guess the second part of this is, is if it's a question of finances, I mean, you're partnering with local businesses. Is that something that the local businesses would be interested in? I mean, if the two man hours equates five businesses to throw in 20 bucks, I mean, that may be something where now you've got communities that are putting their money where their mouth is, and you've kind of got more incentive. But I, I want to hesitate there a little bit, and I know why we do this on the rental fee, but really, really the fee is about the two man hours and not, I mean, we're including $75 a week for the rental of what it would take to rent the truck, um, but that would probably be something that we would normally waive for something like this, um, in the same way that we waive rental fees for the Basque Community Center and even this building sometimes. That, that is true, but we also are talking every week. Sure. Which is going to add up to five thousand dollars a year. Sure. I think we ought to try this with the eight cubic yard dumpsters for three months. Get some feedback on what it looks like over that period, and then move on from there. I, I would say that we do need to have a trial period to see how it does go, and again, something drawn up. And if we do get busy and, you know, we've got to say, hey, look, we are swamped this week, 
Steve, is it okay? You know, and, and as long as we have an agreement that, that there might be some times when we don't have the people or the time to do it, and if that's okay, that's when you get those FFA kids out there in the dumpster, not you. Steve, I see you chomping at the bit over there. Is there another uh, permanent solution? Get our assistance in the time being. You know, when I was on the council before, there was citizens that come in and ask for a recycling program. And what the city always threw back was, it's not cost feasible. We can't do it. We can't put the little tubs out there and do it. Uh, accolades to all of you for making this happen, regardless of the cost. We have a recycling program. I don't know what statistics show how much less cubic yards are going in our dump trucks. But I know I've been guilty. My wife loves Amazon. And I've been, <laughs> I've been guilty of yeah, probably true. filling a truck half full behind my house, yeah. cardboard, et cetera. Um, is there another solution such as can we look at retroing these trailers with maybe an axle on it and a hitch and get I might even volunteer to bring my big truck out and haul that. Uh, but it's another I idea rather than just can we do the dumpsters and can the city do it? Let's look at alternatives to continue rather than threatening Steve and others. You're going to get three months, but we may be done after that. The program's going. Let's don't do anything to kill it. I, I love the way you think because I, and I just sat down and just penciled it out the other day. I think me and my guys at the farm have put in over 3,000 hours, just voluntary hours. And again, you know, I, I'm just an old you know, 70 year old guy out there dumpster diving. We got to get some younger kids involved with this. And I don't know what it's going to take, but we're trying like heck to do this. You know, and I also liked your comment too. When I talk to people that moved to Iola from a different city, what's the common question that I always get is doesn't Iola have a recycling program? You know, I always get that. And so, as somebody that's work, working with Farm City Days and community economic development, Anything we can do to draw people to Iola, uh, you know, is, is something that's a feather in our hat. So, you know, we got to figure out a way to work together to do this. And I, I don't know what it's going to take, but I'm willing to try anything. And we have, and I like your idea too. We've actually thought about that idea. I, I priced dump trailers that I could pull behind my truck. <laughs> nine to twelve thousand dollars you know I'm ready to buy a grapple fork for the front of my skid steer because I'm you know just out of my pocket because I'm tired of walking around and picking the stuff up out of the loading dock and bringing around I'm getting lots of steps you know except I broke my Fitbit you know but there's got to be a better way of doing it than handling it two or three times and I you know I, I just believe in recycling and I, and I bet most of you guys do too it's just a way of we just have to figure out how to do it better. Mark you know so. I haven't heard from you what are you thinking here I'm thinking the 90 day trial period Kim <clears throat> I agree yeah I'm for that we're on that's fine okay um, it looks like the council is coming to a consensus here um, for the 90 days and then we'll have it back uh, to, to see what tweaks we can't make to make it more permanent, um, to see if we do need to invest or fundraise or whatever for the smaller ones, however we want to do that. Um, some sort of agreement drawn up. Yeah. And so I think, I think there's that understanding that I think you guys are understand that if we're busy that week, that's fine. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Uh, item B, master plan. Mr. Mayor and members of council, um, staff has recognized the need to better understand the gas flows from our southern complex and how best to balance these flows. Um, with the flows from the West Town Border Station. Um, Burns and McDonald has provided a proposed scope of services to evaluate the gas flow balance between the South Town and West Town Border Stations. And as part of that work, um, Burns and McDonald will also propose cost estimates for the potential solutions. Um, this work will also be incorporated, um, can also be incorporated into the larger master plan that is scheduled for the, the entire gas utility. Uh, this. Funding for this would come from Fund 81, which is the gas um, capital improvement plan 
fund. And uh, if council is agreeable to the proposed scope of services outlined in the letter included in the packet, um, council can authorize staff to move forward with the preliminary gas utility master plan engineering study with Burns McDonald. The letter would then be incorporated into a task order which fall, would fall under kind of our master agreement with Burns McDonald, um, not to exceed $12,000 and staff would execute that task order. Sid, do you think with doing this kind of a preliminary study, once the master plan is done, that this would probably help alleviate some of the time and cost of having the master plan done? I, I think if you if we were doing if our need wasn't as immediate as it is, um, we would just do this as part of a, the overall master plan. But trying to get this kind of step one done is kind of why we we broke it off, and this would just play right into the information that would be included in a master, the larger master plan. Okay. Any other questions? Is there anyone want to make me a motion on this? I make a motion that we authorize staff to move forward with the preliminary gas utility master plan engineering study with Burns and McDonald, not to exceed twelve thousand, and to sign the necessary documents. There is a motion and a second. All those in favor, please show voting sign. Opposed. Motion passes. Uh, item C. Council president selection. Uh, the council president is largely, uh, runs the meetings if I am not here. Uh, in the past, we have made that the most senior member um, or the longest serving member, um, but that is up to the council to decide. Uh, we elect the person for a two year term every time. So, council? I make a motion we to nominate Nancy Ford as the new council president. Second. Nancy, accept. Sure. Um, there's a motion and a second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor of uh, naming Nancy Ford as the council president, please show a voting sign. Opposed? Motion passes. And one last item in executive session. Um, Sid, how long would you, or Carla, how long would you like this? Ten? Okay. I move. I make a motion I move the city council recess in the executive session for 15 minutes pursuant to personnel matters of non-elected personnel KSA 75-4319B1. The purpose of the executive session is to discuss an individual em employee's employment and shall include the mayor, council, city administrator, assistant city administrator, and human resource manager. The regular meeting shall reconvene the city council. 44. 40. 44. Motion and a second has been made. All those in favor, please show a voting sign. 654. 54. 54. Sorry, that's my bad. I was looking at what time it was. Oh, that was a quick exam. It's 654. Apologies. Uh, 54, so we will return to session. Um, and we are now in line for council and administrative reports. Uh, why don't we start with Mark? On the uh, on administrative reports, uh, I noticed we had a separation from services for our code enforcement. Is this a job that we should put on hold and maybe start doing some savings? Or do we really need two code enforcement personnel in a city of 5,000? Just open up for discussion. I mean, I think I, I'm in agreement with you. That was one of the things with that job study. And right now, we've got a perfect example of a time when maybe we should put this on hold for a while and look at the structure and see if this really does need to happen if this assistant this is I don't know how many assistants we've had it seems like in this position but I would only well, hold on let's, let's go let's I, I guess I would just I, I, I'm in agreement with Mark that maybe this is one we can put on hold for a little while um, okay. we're not gonna oh why don't we put we're not going to open that to a full full discussion now because we're out of order on that. But if, if you want to weigh in um, as we come around to you, Steve, um, you're in line for a council and council report. Uh, I understand what they're saying on that. I think that's a good thing to discuss since it was a budget item and discussion and all that. But other than that, I have nothing to report. It's good to be back and honored to be able to serve. Uh, Getting happy to be sitting between us, huh? Kim. <laughs> I think we probably have a high turnover in that position because it doesn't pay enough. And 
um, maybe we don't need to look at the numbers or whatever. Okay. Ron? That was actually where I was going to go with tonight is that, you know, we did this this uh, employee study that we spent $16,000 on and we haven't really done anything with it. Definitely need to look at here shortly and otherwise we, there's not really any point of doing studies in the future if we're not going to do anything with them. That's all that I have. Carl? Comment? Um, I'll agree with everybody on that and I think Chinooch only got one code enforcement down there. Uh, next thing I got, Sid, where are we at on that uh, prairie grass study on the green spaces? Um, we've, we've identified the, the one lot up here. Um, we're kind of working. We haven't done a whole lot since we last presented that because the time frame of that would be next fall or, or late summer that we would kill the grass off and plan to prepare the ground for replanting which would be a year from now um, so we we're kind of just still just trying to get gather a little bit of information I think we have a meeting scheduled in a week or so to discuss some potential options on um, a grant to get some plants for that when we get to the planting side of it and John, I need visual with you about that a little more than okay. uh, I got. Um, Nick? Um, first meeting, so I'm not quite sure I'm up to speed on what they're talking about. Um, looking forward to hearing more about it. Looking forward to Sarah Viola. Definitely glad to join the party. Um, it gets crazy at times. Looking forward to it. <laughs> looking forward to it. Um, as for me, I want to thank um, the city crews. I saw a couple of them out on, oh, what was that, before the storm, Friday night at about one in the morning, putting some salt down. Um, I want to thank all the first responders that were, and all the people that were on call on New Year's um, that responded to the fire at 2.30 in the morning um, when most people were already in bed. Um, and again, just thank all the city crews for everything they do. Um, Secondly, uh, uh, at some point, Roxanne Sid will probably want to call a special meeting. If you haven't heard, the college has re has changed their time for their discussion to, f to Monday, February 17th. So if we're going to have more than three or four of us there, we'll probably want to go ahead and call that meeting. Uh, other than that, Sid? Um, I main thing is I was going to have Roxanne was going to provide a quick update on the whole credit and debit card transaction um, fee tr uh, issue uh, or transition as we, <laughs> as we should call it. Um. Okay, we I think that's one. Um, we got the open edge installed, which is just the credit card system right now. So everyone who uses a credit or debit card is being charged on them and not the city. Um, that money goes straight to the credit card company and is dispersed to Visa, MasterCard, whoever. Um, there, we have new credit card machines that the customer uses on their side. So we're no longer handling the actual cards, which I like that also. Um, we're looking at probably by the end of the month, maybe into the first week of February, getting the online system up and going so customers can access that. We've had some feedback, but mostly people are just using cash or checks so thank you mm -hmm. um said anything else um no i was just going to mention the the facility meeting at the college and then to be thinking about strategic planning uh that's what we've kind of done that in mid-march in the last few years and think about what kind of process you want to do because last year we didn't have a lot of participation and that's important to have that participation so that goals and priorities can be set for staff so that we can carry that out the rest of the year um, so think about what that might want what you might want that to look like so that's all I had motion to adjourn that was my motion. I Would you second. like to second? A motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, please show voting sign. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Who seconded it? Carl did. Don't forget, Corey wants to take your